Today I wanted to show you how you can batch process multiple photos or files to upload to the web such that the file size is as small as possible without losing image quality. Uh, in one case I had probably over a hundred pictures I had to process such that the client uh, could upload those photos to their web page and they still retained the quality but were as small as possible. And uh, I just learned how to do it so I want to show everybody else because it's really useful and saves you a ton of time. So we're going to start with, uh, we have Photoshop, I have CC 2017 open. I already have a picture of an ant um, open here, uh, but I'm just going to start clean and uh, we'll go through the process um, so that you know how to do it. Uh, the first thing we're going to do is you're going to want to have two folders. And what you can see here is I have one folder to the left. This has just, uh, looks like, just sort of eight sample images, eight, eight, eight of my photographs. And these are high-res JPEGs, and you can sort of see in the size column, they're all about two megabytes, which is pretty big if you're trying to upload to the web. So if I wanted to take my photography and convert them such that the quality wasn't uh, destroyed, but the file size is reduced, uh, say, to view on a web page, uh, here's how you would do that. So you have your original folder. This could be any folder that you have where you have the files you want to convert. It's usually best to have them all in one folder because you're going to tell Photoshop which folder to use to do this batch automation process. And then you also want a folder, and that's why I have to the right, where you're going to actually have the files saved. So you're not going to be replacing the original files, you're just going to save new files, but these will be dramatically reduced in size so you can use them on a web page. So you just want to make sure you have a folder where you're going to save them, and then of course a folder where you might have all the images that you're going to convert. So the first thing I'm going to do is in the, in the folder where I have my images I want to convert, I'm going to go ahead and open one of those in Photoshop. And you'll see a picture of a sweet looking skeptical chickadee I took in Ballard in Seattle. And then what you're going to want to do, um, this is the first photo, you're going to want to open what's called the Actions palette. And to do that you want to go to Window, and then you should see Actions. And the dialog box is going to pop up here, and it already has some default actions, and you can see I've created a couple folders, one called Actions and Actions 2. But we're going to start from scratch and show you how to do this. So the first thing you want to do is click on the folder icon, and then you're going to go ahead and name that Actions. And then the next thing you're going to do is you're going to want to create a new action set, essentially. And this is what's going to allow you to record the process that you do so you can repeat it in the batch automation process that we'll do after we complete one photo. So it's the, looks like a little page, you'll click that, and then you'll call that Something like save for web, it's already going to be nested inside of the actions folder we just created. And if you want, you can pick the color. I'm going to choose green because the grass is green. And we're going to hit this record button. Now what that does is you'll see a little red circle. That means every action that you do in Photoshop now will be recorded by Photoshop. And then you can play it back with multiple images. All right, so we're ready to go. First thing we're going to do is we go up to Image, and then under Image Size, this is going to give us what our photo is now. And you can see it's relatively large. It's 8.5 by 5.7 inches at a resolution of 240. Well, the first thing we want to do is go ahead and put the resolution at 72, which is perfect for web viewing. And if you want, at this point, um, if you're working with web stuff, you may have some characteristics you want to abide by. You could change the height, say, to 500. Um, I'll just do that here just for, just for showing purposes. Um, but you want to make sure your re resolution is at least 72. And go ahead and hit OK. 
Now you notice in the actions palette, it's created a new dropdown called image size. So it's recording everything that, however we alter this image. Okay, so now at this point, we want to go under edit, convert to profile. And what, what this is going to do is make sure that we'll, the conversion for the image is perceptual. And essentially what this does is, is, it, is it keeps all the colors we generally want. That's a really non-technical, and it goes a little bit beyond my expertise. But as far as I understand, this is a, a good thing to do. And so under your profile, you want it to be working RGB which it should be by default, and then under intent, um, you want to switch that to perceptual. And go ahead and hit OK. And now, we will export the image. And to do that, uh, you'll want to save for web. Uh, in Photoshop, it used to be um, within the menu, but now it's buried. So you go to File, and then Export, and then you want to do Save for Web. It's now a legacy option. Okay, so here's our original in the Save for Web output menu or dialog box. You can see there's some tabs up here. There's optimized, and then they have what's called two up or even four up. And you can, of course, set your presets. I'm going to set mine as a JPEG. You can use other ones. They have PNGs. I think JPEG is probably the safest bet. And um, the biggest thing we're concerned with is the quality, and the quality will determine the file size. Now, our original file was about two megabytes. Now that we're, if we, when we do the four up panel, it gives you, here's the image at 80, at 80 quality, and then it'll show you the image over here. This is the original. And then we've got image quality at 40, and then image quality at 20 in the lower right. So, you can see by, if I keep the image quality at 80, the JPEG size is only 139K, which is a good size for, for the web. That's gonna load really fast. And if you want, you can really make sure, or really see, if you go down to the lower left, you'll see it says 100%. You can increase the size of that, and you can really see how changing the quality affects the image quality. Now at quality 20, you can see here that it gets, starts to get pretty pixelated. And that gives us a 33.3K file size, which is really small. But with you know, internet connected speeds nowadays, 139, which is an image quality of 80, uh, is probably gonna be fine. But this gives you a good sense, um, if you wanna zoom up, of how much distortion or how much image quality you're gonna sacrifice. Again, you can see the original here to the left, upper left, and then when I put on any image quality, it actually looks pretty good. When I start to go down to 20, uh, it starts to look pretty artifact and pretty gross. So we're gonna keep it at 80. Now you can adjust that setting with the quality slider if you want, and it will adjust the file on the fly. We're gonna go ahead and keep it at 80, because that actually looks pretty, pretty good, uh, pretty close to the original. And I'm gonna go ahead and hit save, now at this point, you wanna make sure that where you save the file is in the folder that you created. Those are those two folders we looked at earlier. One was one had our, our images that we were starting from, which were all about two megabytes. And then you wanna create a folder, of course, name it so that you know what's gonna be in it. And mine is just called web JPEGs. The other folder was called high res JPEGs, and that tells me which folder is which. So the new folder, the empty folder that we created was called WebJPEGs, and so I'm gonna pick that. Go ahead and hit save. And then our last process is to close the image. Now pay attention, when you close the image, I don't wanna save it because it'll overwrite my original file. I wanna make sure I have two files. One is the high-res JPEG, one is the WebJPEG. So I'm gonna click don't save. Here's the original photo I was had open. And then I'm gonna hit the stop button in the actions palette. Okay, now hypothetically if that worked, what I can do is um, 
we're going to do the automation process now. And this is how you do that. Under File, we want to go down to Automate. And then it says Batch. You click that. Here's where you're going to load the actions that you just did for that uh, photo we just converted. Now, under Play, you're going to have the folder you created. And what I did is I created Actions. And then the action will be in that folder, which is called Save the Web. And then here, it's going to, you're going to see a source. The source will be a folder. And then you're going to click Choose. Now, at this point, you want to make sure to choose the folder where you have the high-res JPEGs or the files that you want to convert, however you want to say it. I'm going to make sure to select that folder. I'm going to hit Choose. And then in the destination, it's going to be a folder. Of course, you can do Save to Close or None. It's defaulted to folder. We're going to hit choose. And then I'm going to find that folder where it was the web JPEGs, not the high res JPEGs. Of course, you can save them in the same folder if you want, but just to keep things clean, you want to have a new folder that has nothing, nothing in it ideally. So we're going to select web JPEGs. I'm going to hit choose. And then at this point, we're just going to hit OK and watch it, watch the magic. So what it's doing is it's processing the images I had in that folder. Once it's done, you can go back to your folders. And now you can see in this folder, we have our smaller size files. So what it's done is it's gone from the left folder, which is our high res. You can see the size here. Everything's about 2 megs. And after the batch conversion, everything now is about 144 kilobytes, which is generally good for uh, the web. Anyway, if anyone has any questions or any feedback um, of how to make this better, uh, please let me know. This is David from Zero State Reflex Design, and uh, thank you for watching.